So um, I know that on this website we often um, spend a lot of time talking about what it means to be a scientist and who scientists are. But as a scientist who studies animal behavior, today I wanted to talk about the stars of my research, which are the animals. Um, so a lot of my friends also study animals. And so a common question we get is, uh, does that mean that you want to be a vet? Which we don't want to be, but after we get through to sort of through what that, what does we want to do? Um, the sort of next most common question is, okay, so what animals do you work with? And my friends work with some incredibly cool animals. Um, one of my best friends works with basking sharks, which are the second largest shark in the world. And they hang out in amazing places like Ireland and also places in Santa Barbara. Um, my other friend studies kinkajous, which if you've never seen before, you should look one up. They are just a living embodiment of adorable. Just all of the cute things in a little furry package. Um, they hang out in the trees in Panama. Um, and it's hard to keep that because I study mosquito fish, which uh, do not hang out in the waves of Santa Barbara. They may hang out in sort of the less desirable places around there. They hang out in drainage ditches and flooded parking lots. Uh, and honestly, I was once asked to describe them, and the only word I could come up with to describe them was I've read that they're silver colored, but I think that's overstating it. I really think they're sort of bland colored. Um, but really, I, I I think they're amazing. That's why I work with them. And I think I sometimes undersell how cool they are. And so I just want to take a little bit of time today to talk about how cool these animals are. And I'm not the only person who thinks that. Um, one of my life goals is actually to go to um, Alder, Russia, where they actually erected this statue, a golden statue of mosquito fish to commemorate the role that they played in the eradication of malaria there. Because um, they're actually, they um, have a sort of wide impact with, human, um, with humans and with other animals all over the world because they're incredibly invasive. Um, they're found on six of the seven continents. They're really just, um, have issues with Antarctica yet. And that's probably because they're um, sort of temperature limited, um, but they're not nearly as temperature limited as many fish. They're, one of the reasons they're cool is they have an incredible temperature tolerance. They're found in water that was freezing cold all at like 108 degrees, which for some species it has like a temperature tolerance of one or two degrees. That's this massive range that we're talking about. Um, they're also good at surviving in um, low oxygen water. So if you have an aquarium at home, you probably add a bubbler to it or something else that's agitating the water because just like humans and other animals, fish require oxygen. So normally they've got gills that water is being trapped and it's pulling the oxygen out of that. But if water doesn't have enough oxygen in it, the fish are sort of out of luck. Except fish like mosquito fish, which can do cool things like go up to the surface and actually sort of do this weird mouth breathing thing. So they can survive through really low oxygen. They also can survive in high salt. Um, so some papers claim to twice the level of the ocean, despite the fact that they're freshwater fish. Um, so they're dealing with salt problems really well. Um, one of the things I really like them also is that they are live, um, they give live birth. So most fish, like salmon, if you can think about these like charismatic fish that sort of spawn once a year and they're coming up with the stream and the males are shooting out sperm, the females are shooting out eggs and they're mixing together. Um, mosquito fish don't do that. So the males have this modified fin um, called a noctodium, which is basically the fish equivalent of a penis, except that it is just delivering sperm to the female. So she gets the sperm and then it's developing the egg inside of her. She's got this little brood patch. Um, that is sort of providing stuff to the egg. And then she gives birth to little baby fish, which I honestly, I didn't love fish when I started studying mosquito fish. And baby fish are maybe not kitten level cute, but they are pretty adorable. They're just all eyes and this like, little, like their eyes and tail muscles from the way they thing. Because there's lots of things that want to eat them. And that's one of the benefits of having a, um, giving birth to live young, is that in the same way that we love caviar, lots of animals because they're just these little packets of fat and nutrients that are normally just sort of floating around um, the stream beds in the ocean that are sort of up to be eaten. But mosquito fish moms carrying that baby around sort of give their babies a head start. Uh, which is not to say that they are the best parents in the fish world. I have worked with fish that do mouth rooting, they keep their babies in their mouth even after they've hatched from their eggs to protect them from predators. And mosquito fish are not that good. Um, in fact, in the lab, I think the hardest thing that I um, Reading them the hardest thing is keeping the parents from eating the offspring after they've given birth to their live young. If their chest is too small in the area, they're not rolling right around and snap on the baby because there's no place for them to go. So, good parents, not great parents, but still awesome fish. Um, and I think that, like, the thing that all of these things really need, sort of the big takeaway from these points, is that mosquito fish are survivors. There are all of these challenges in our world, especially in a changing environment, um, that we're expecting animals to deal with. And some are not thriving as well as others. But mosquito fish are doing really well. And so understanding why it is that mosquito fish and why certain mosquito fish do really well in a changing environment is where 
Anyway, we'll talk more about them as we talk more about my research. But um, thanks for chatting with me about the studio pick, and I look forward to talking more. See you guys later. Hi guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, be sure to like and subscribe and definitely check out some of our other videos either here on the YouTube or um, on Instagram or on scial.org. Um, we look forward to chatting science with you next time.